back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is Havlo's Theory of Opportunity Cost. Previously you all loved my videos on international trade so I thought to come up with another video on international trade. So this particular video we will be talking all about opportunity cost, assumptions, the increasing, decreasing and constant opportunity cost. So yeah, let's get started. Also guys don't forget to like this video and please do subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. So firstly guys, let us study the criticisms of Ricardo's theory only after which this theory came into existence. So I've already made a video on the comparative advantage theory by Ricardo and I'll attach the link in the comment section below. So the number one shortcoming was that over there we had assumed that labor is the only FOP. FOP is factors of production. But that isn't true. We all know that there are four types of factors of production, land, labor, entrepreneur and capital. So we cannot forget or ignore the other factors of production and only consider labor in our evaluation. Secondly, in that theory, it was considered that all labor is homogeneous, that is all labor working in different countries works in the same efficient manner, which obviously isn't true. Hey, labor is always heterogeneous. So on these grounds, Ricardo's theory was criticized and Habler's theory came into existence. Habler's theory of opportunity cost, before moving towards that, let me first explain to you the concept of opportunity cost. What basically is opportunity cost? So for example, we have 20,000 rupees in hand and we can either purchase a luxury MK bag or we can either buy Michael Kors shoes. Okay, we have an option of MK bag or MK shoes. So the opportunity cost of buying that MK bag is those MK shoes. So we can either buy one of that, right? We are giving up on one to get the other. So basically, what does this particular theory, the Harbler's theory states? It says that if a country can produce either commodity X or either commodity Y, the opportunity cost of X is the amount of Y which one must give us to produce one additional unit of X. So how much Y we are giving up to produce X is our opportunity cost. So guys, there are quite a lot of assumptions under this theory. Let us quickly run through them. Number one, there are only two countries in our assumption. Each country has two factors of production, labor and capital. Each country can produce two commodities, say X and Y. So basically it's a two by two by two model. There is perfect competition in factor and commodity market. There is full employment. There is no change of technology. That is the technology remains constant. The factors of production are mobile within the countries, but they are immobile outside the country. And lastly, trade is free and unrestricted. So now guys, we'll be coming to the actual actual theory. So please pay attention. PPC production possibility curve or also known as PPF production possibility frontier. It shows us the various alternative combinations of two commodities that a country can produce most efficiently by fully utilizing its FOP with the available technology. Confused, right? Don't get so. In plain and simple words, it basically means for sari combinations jo do commodities ke country mein ban sakte hain with the best technology, with the fully utilizing resources, sab kuch use karke jo hum bana sakte hain. Slope of PPC, basically, it measures the amount of goods that a country must give up in order to get one additional or, or unit of the second commodity. It is also known as MRT, which is marginal rate of transformation. So, ek unit kitna hum give up karenge to get another, you know, good. Uh, so, basically, par we have three types of opportunity cost, constant, increasing and decreasing. Firstly, we'll be talking about trade under constant opportunity cost. So here is a little diagram and most important thing which one should know is that under the constant opportunity cost our PPC is a straight line. Okay, you can see it's a straight line. It's not a convex or concave curve but a straight line. We see that you know, we have taken two commodities rice on the y axis and wheat on the x axis and two countries A and B. So the PPC of country A is PA whereas the PPC of country B is PB. I hope you can see that. Now, what we can see the combinations, what we have is A can produce, what can A produce? It can produce OP amount of rice or OA amount of wheat. That are the combinations available to A. Whereas B can produce OP amount of rice and OB amount of wheat. That is the combination of B. But if country B wants to produce both of the rice and wheat, we can also have a point known as point E, which is like an equilibrium point. Here we have, it can produce OX, one amount of wheat, whereas it can also produce OYI amount of rice. So this is also one more available combination. 
So basically, what is this diagram denoting or what are we trying to observe or learn in this? We are seeing that the opportunity cost of leaving one unit in order to have one more of another commodity is constant. Basically, it means that we have to give up rice to produce 10 units of rice. We have to give up rice to wheat. It is constant, right? 10 we are leaving and 10 we are gaining over there. And here the relative price uh, ratio also we can have for country B is OP upon OB. Whereas the relative price for country A is OP upon OA. So I hope you are clear with the trade under constant opportunity cost. So now guys moving ahead to trade under increasing opportunity cost. There were few shortcomings of trade under constant opportunity cost and hence we have trade under increasing opportunity cost. So number one shortcoming is that under constant opportunity cost, factors are used in fixed proportion due to perfect substitutability for you know the factors of production. For example, labor can be used for capital, capital can be used for labor, which is unrealistic and untrue. And secondly, all units of each factor are homogeneous, which definitely is not true. So coming ahead to increasing opportunity cost, firstly look at the diagram. Now obviously you can see the shape of the PPC curve is different. Over there we had a straight line, but over here our PP curve is uh, PPC curve is concave to the origin please make sure that you remember this because this is like a question which can be asked in any mcq also because the shape is concave which you can clearly see for country a the slope clearly shows that it specializes in the production of wheat which is taken again on the x-axis and rice on the y-axis we notice guys that as we move from point a which is here to point a1 or a dash whatever you can call it we see that country A is giving up larger and larger units of rice to produce additional unit of wheat. You can see rice ka production has fallen so much to produce little more of wheat. So basically it's showing, for example, that time we were giving 10 units of rice to get 10 units of wheat. Here maybe we are giving 20 units of rice to get additional 10 units of wheat. And this is what increasing opportunity cost is. Basically, a, special, a faces increasing opportunity cost as it produces each additional unit of wheat in which it is specializing. So this is all about what you need to know. I've kept the diagram pretty simple in few books. It's very complicated. But for your simplification, I've kept it like that. So I hope you are clear with the concept of increasing opportunity cost. So lastly guys, coming to trade under decreasing opportunity cost, which is like a vice versa of our trade under increasing opportunity cost. Here clearly you can see the PP curve is convex to the origin, the shape clearly denotes it, which means that we give up less and less amount of rice in order to gain additional unit of wheat. For example, we are giving 5 units of rice uh, to gain additional 10 units of wheat. So this is all about uh, decreasing opportunity cost. So I hope you are clear with this theory. This theory was critically appraised as it was more realistic than the Ricardian theory. I hope this video was useful for you. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.